Night has fallen, the fear is calming, still you're calling me. Faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo an echo in my soul In my soul In every season You keep repeating Your promises to me Now there's no stopping What you have started Till it is complete when my mind says I'm not good enough God, you're enough for me And I've decided I'm not giving up You won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on I'm not giving up You won't give up on me He won't give up on me Your love is holding on And it won't let go I feel it breaking out Like an echo Your love is holding on And it won't let go I feel it breaking out Breaking out Let's put our hands together Your love is holding on And it won't let go in God's house this morning. Like a covenant of old Your love is enduring Through the winter rain And beyond the horizon With mercy for today And faithful you have been And faithful you will be You pledge yourself to me and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever
ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. In your shoulder our weakness For the strength becomes our own Your making me like you In clothing me in white Bringing beauty from ashes For you will have your bride Free of all her guilt And rid of all her shame known by her true name and it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips So if you just slip up your hand, if you don't have them, I wouldn't get it to you. Someone can get it to the pastor up at the front. So guys, oh, what is something that I love about when we take communion is really you can find it right in the name. And that is this idea of coming together. I was listening to something this week, and it was, um, it's this video I don't know how many of you know Hillsong Church in Australia but they every year they have this massive conference and they released a little video this week about kind of like the elements of their creative process for this 
this year. And something that I really liked about it is they talked about the idea of what happens when a chorus or a choir sings together. And even though the church is varied and we all look different and we come from different walks of life and we all have different jobs and come from different families, the thing is when we come together in one common purpose and when we sing that common song, it's like everything else just comes into line. And we get in sync. And that's what we're doing here with communion. We're remembering. We're remembering why we do what we do. Because at the end of the day, you know what? I'm going to leave here and my life might look a little different from yours. But what binds us together is our love for our Savior. And our remembering what He's done for us. What He does for us. And what He will continue to do for us. And letting His glory be revealed in our heart little by little, one day at a time. So let's go ahead and open up the top right here. Bear with me as I do it with one hand. So in remembering the story, the night that Jesus was betrayed in the garden, he had one final supper, the last supper, with his closest friends. And I love this picture that's painted because there was nothing more important to him than why he was doing what he was going to do. And it was in being surrounded by the people that he called friends that he was always reminded why he needed to do what he needed to do. And he told them as he took the bread while they were eating and he broke it and he passed it around and he said, take this and eat it because this is my body that's broken for you. He wanted them to be completely aware of the fact that what he was doing, he was doing for them. And so I want you to know this morning, what he did, he did for you. So as you break this, don't just think that you're breaking a little wafer, a little cookie, and eating it. You're remembering that his body was broken for you. I want you to say, it was broken for me. So go ahead and break that needle. And at the same time, he took the cup of wine at the table and he passed it around. And he said, take this and drink it. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. I know that sounds really weird, especially for our modern context. But something is so interesting that it's always kind of spoke to me. That in, I think, the epistle of John, you find that it, it, Jesus didn't lose so many followers as it was whenever he told the people that were following him what his ministry was all about. When he told them that this is about me dying, this is about my blood being spilled, and unless you eat my body and drink my blood, which sounds completely bizarre, then you won't enter into life. But that's what we're doing. We're eating his body, we're drinking his blood. I know it's, again, not in a cultish way, but we're remembering that it was his body that was broken for us that bought us that freedom. His blood that was spilled. In other words, the highest price was paid. Life was traded for life. That's what we're remembering this morning. That He gave His life that we might enjoy life. So as you drink this juice, remember He said, this is a new promise. And I'm buying it with my blood. Let's take this together this morning. Lord, we thank You. We thank You that Your body was broken. That You were willing to take that high cost and that high price upon yourself because it's something we never could have done and we thank you Lord that you are willing to do it to go the distance for us Lord we thank you for it we remember it this morning and in remembering Lord we pray that we're brought that much closer together that we remember that why we do these things day after day this is just not prayers that we pray it's not things that we do just hoping that we can get your favor we're doing it because we know that it's life and that if we can flow from a place of life lord then we'll be able to share that life with others we thank you lord and we praise you in jesus name amen and amen you know we're going to open up this time for prayer as we go into this next song our prayer team if you want to go ahead and come up on the sides you know, I repeat this every time that, that I get to share about this, but take advantage of this. You don't have to walk alone through whatever you're going through right now. I don't know if you, you're sick, you haven't been able to get over a certain hump in your life, you might be going through something with your job or your marriage or kids or whatever. We want to pray with you this morning. We want to carry that burden with you. 
Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are burdened. You're working so hard, and I'll give you rest. That's what we want to do with you this morning. We want to encourage you and agree with you that you can find rest this morning. doesn't mean your problems are going to disappear. It's going to mean that he's going to help you get with them. Amen. So good to me For I took your breath You breathed your life in me You've been so, so kind to me And all the overwhelming never Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Leaves the 99 And I couldn't earn it And I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. Yes, you have. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me And all oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Leaves the 99 And I couldn't earn it And I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God hey, yeah. oh. Sing it with me. No shadow you won't light up. Not to you won't climb up. Come and act to me. No why you won't kick down. Why you won't tear down. Come and act to me. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Come and act to me. No why you won't. Down, why you won't tear down? Coming after me. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down. Why you won't tear down? Coming after me. Holy overwhelming, never ending, breathless. Love of God, oh, it chases me down, 
love this song so much because I feel like, you know, out, for all ages, people have started to write songs. They've tried to write songs that um, just display what's in your heart. You can tell the author of this song had a revelation of who God was and his extravagant love. And it talks about God's love being reckless. And it just reminded me all through the Bible, you know, when you read the Bible, it's it's explaining God to us. It's telling us who he is. It's giving us that revelation of the God that we serve. And I was brought to um, 1 Corinthians 13. We're familiar with it. If we've been in church for a little while, usually it's read at weddings, you know, and it's our um, effort kind of sometimes when you hear it to talk about how we should love. But I thought about it through this song today that if we read it the opposite way, it's really describing who Jesus is. It's describing who God is to us. And so as I read this to you this morning, I want you to think about how God loves you. Don't think about me trying to live up to this because this chapter is pretty lofty. The description of love is, is something that we really can't attain, but I want you to hear it as if it was God's love for you. It says, love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful. It is not jealous or envious, love or God. It does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. 
It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things, regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each one, hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. Love where God never fails. It never fades nor ends. I want us to think about that and let's just go back into that chorus. I want us to just be overcome with that enduring God. It talks about it. Doesn't remember what you did wrong. One of the biggest barriers sometimes to realizing who God is for you is that you carry all this guilt or all this shame or all of these mistakes that you might have had throughout the week or maybe just these heavy burdens that we're talking about. But in perfect love, all of that can go away, can be cast out. So as we sing this again, just the chorus, I want you to think about God just covering you. He never fades. He never ends. He endures in difficult times. And maybe that's you this morning. Let's go back into this song and just lift your hands if you feel comfortable. And just let God's love overshadow you today. Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, peace and ninety-nine. And I could earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, backless love. Jesus, I just pray for every need in this room. Lord, we just lift up anything that we have that is difficult for us, and we just give it to you. I pray that your love would overshadow us today, and we would realize just how high, how deep, how wide, how far it goes. I pray that any hurt, God, that we carried in this week or any guilt or any shame, God, you would remind us of your perfect love. You would remind us who you are. Our hearts would be open to hear afresh from you this morning. We just thank you for this house that we can come and we can be reminded of who you are together in this place. And I just pray that your love would chase us down this week, that we couldn't turn too far without realizing the goodness of God in our lives. And then because of that, we would overflow to those around us and we would make a difference in the world that we live in, which is so desperate and in need of this love that we're talking about. We just love you, Jesus. We love you so much and we thank you for your help in time of need. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Put your hands together. I don't know about you, but I just love coming to this place and coming to this house and being together. And we're just so happy that all of you, on behalf of Pastors Josh and Brooke, we want to just welcome you to Anchor Chapel. And all those watching online too, can you clap your hands for all those people who are joining us online? Maybe you couldn't be here with us today, but we want to welcome you and um, just would love for you to be um, a part of what we do here at Anchor Chapel. And um, if it is your first time and you're in the house today, we want you to look in the seat back in front of you. There is a Get Connected card. And if you feel comfortable, we just want you to fill that out. Um, let us know a little bit about you. You can leave it on the seat um, on your way out, or you can take it to the desk, the Connections desk, and they have a little gift for you. We just want to thank you for being with us and if you have been coming for a while and you call Anchor Chapel your home, but you just really want to get connected and want to know more about what the church has to offer, you want to become a part of the life of what we do, we do that in Anchor Groups. 
So if you've not yet gotten involved in an anchor group and really want to do that, maybe you have some extra time this summer, college students or teachers like me, if you want to get involved in something, go to the Connections desk or you can check it out online and find out how to get more involved. We would love for you to do that. Well, again, it's so good to see you guys. Take a few moments, give a high five to someone, tell them that you're glad to see them, and we'll be right back. Anchor Chapel, where we believe that Jesus is the hope for every soul. If this is your first or second time with us, we're so happy that you're here. Today we'll be continuing our series, Summer Jams, with a message that we know will bring you hope to right where you are. But before we get to that, here's a taste of what's happening here in the life of Anchor Chapel. Anchor Chapel, we are right here at the site of a brand new house that's going to be used for a feeding program and church services that the church we partnered with here, Oasis, has just built. They got a new campus right here in this community, and we spent all day building this thing. These amazing guys helped to put it together, but it was also possible because of your faithful giving. So man, what a great project to be a part of as a church. Thank you guys so much. Hey students, coming up very soon is Motion Student Conference. It's going to be July 25th through the 27th, and we know it's going to be a blast. You're going to get to hear from great speakers like me, Ken Carter, hear great worship from Elevation Worship, Carrie Job. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss out, and you can register right now at anchorchapel.com slash motion. We can't wait to see you there. Community really matters here at Anchor Chapel. Anchor groups are a great source of encouragement, growth, and friendships. When you choose to do life alone, you don't find these things. Head over to anchorchapel.com or the Connections Desk to find out more about a group that is perfect for you. So that's a taste of what's happening here at Anchor Chapel. If you'd like more information, you can go on our website, anchorchapel.com, or follow us on all social media platforms, at Anchor Chapel. And while you're there, check in and let us know about your experience today. See y'all next week. Well, good morning, Anchor. Man, I tell you what, it's good to be back in the house. Missed you guys last week. I miss always miss being here whenever I'm always miss whenever I'm not with you guys. But we were all this last week we were in Mexico and Matamoros, Mexico. And I'm gonna give you just kind of a heads up on like what happened in this trip. We'll share a recap in a second. But I also want to challenge you to something. While we were there, um, you know, there's so many things that you don't realize that are needs until you arrive at a place. And, you know, you might see that in relationship with people. You don't realize somebody's story until you hear somebody's story. And, um, you know, so we went out there with a plan to do ministry there. And what we found was that the church that we've been giving to as a church for over a year, um, we've been faithfully like giving every now and then, but we've like monthly started re giving reoccurring as part of our tithe as a church to this, to Pastor Enrique and the mission there. And they have everything that we have given to the church has multiplied over and over. And we I cannot believe like the impact that we've been able to make as a church there in Matamoros. So we did build a house there in a very poor community. Um, and, and one of the things that we noticed is that we, we actually built that. As a church, we bought the land and built this building. We didn't even realize it until we got there. So we put this house up there and they started doing ministry and we had a church service there by the end of the week. And that was a beautiful thing. Uh, now, the, the crazy thing about this is they want to purchase, go back to the other picture, they want to purchase the land on, the, on their left side of them to build an, uh, an awning. It's basically just a pavilion that they want to, an open air pavilion that they want to build as their church to where they can have church there outside because right now we had to set up they had a guy digging holes and put up some some posts and we just put a tarp there so that people would be kind of sheltered but in the rain that's not really going to work well so they want to build a building there to purchase the land on the side they're praying and believing for the land okay and I asked them how much does the land cost and he said well you know it's so many thousand pesos or whatever so we figured it out it's like it's about 250 dollars and I was like okay as a church we can buy this land. Like we can just hook this church up, get them what they need and buy this land for them. And then go to the next photo. This is their main campus in the city of Matamoros, right on the outskirts. This building cost them about $60,000 to build. It's a two-story building. And you can see on the top of that window, there's an air conditioned unit in there. 
It does not work, though, because they can't afford it yet. So they, the, the air condition is installed. There's another window they want to install another unit on top of, but they don't have the right electricity to power them. So they want to install another air conditioning unit and power them. They don't have the money to afford it right now, though. So I asked them, well, what does it cost to get all of this running? And they said, it's going to cost so many thousand pesos. We figured it out. And it was about $450. I'm like, we can do that as a church. Like, like there, it's amazing. Like, we got there. And, like, they, they would never ask us for that. But I saw some of the needs that they could, they, could, they could really help this church flourish. And I felt impressed in my spirit that as a church, we can take care of these things for them. So what I want to do is over the next few weeks... I want you to pray about what you want to do to give above and beyond a tithe to anchor and say, I want to bless the church in Matamoros. This church is called Oasis of Blessing, and I cannot tell you how much that, that name rings true. It is an oasis in this city, and it is such, we just have such a, a connection with them. The way they do ministry, Pastor Enrique is going to come here in September and preach over here, but I was just, I, we've been so drawn to them, and we're going to continue what God is doing. It's funny, like we passed, I was thinking about it, we passed a thousand poor neighborhoods to get to Mexico, so why does it matter that that neighborhood is reached? I believe when God establishes a relationship, you have a responsibility to steward that relationship well. And this relationship between us and their church, I believe, is a God thing. So I want to steward it well. And we've seen the little bit that we've given them, we give a few hundred dollars a month. And the little bit that we give to them, God is multiplying it over and over. So I want to continue to do what God is doing there. I want to continue to bless that ministry. So just pray about it. What would, what would you have me to give if you want to give up above and beyond to it? I'm planning on making a trip out there in a couple weeks, and we want to bless them with money to buy air conditioning and to buy their land. I want to do that. We didn't tell them that, but I want to do that as a church. And then the other thing that we noticed is that kids are running all around, especially in the poorer community. If you go back to the other photo, and you'll see it in the video in a second. Um, this, this community is a third world country community. And these kids, most of the kids are running around with either no shoes or their feet are coming out of their shoes and uh, the clothes is just old and tattered. And like, I want to, as a church, over the next few weeks, I want to challenge you, bring shoes and bring clothes. So let's just, let's bless the heck out of these people. Like when you see it there, it's like, they never would ask for it. It's like, you got to force them to say, what are your needs? They're like, oh, we're good. And it's like, man, we, we want to take care of the kids here. We were in an orphanage, and I'll talk about it a little bit more. But in the orphanage, we're there, and we're just ministering to kids. And I was a wreck. I was an emotional wreck this whole week, like hearing the stories of these kids. I was crying there. I was telling Brooke about it. I'm crying at home. I'm just like, like she said, you're carrying a lot right now. Because when you, when you begin to hear the stories of people, it just changes your perspective. Brooke and I are in prayer right now about what we can do specifically for some kids that we met there. Just be praying for us, too. It's a big, big leap and a crazy idea, but we want to try to help at least one kid. When they age out, they're going to age out in a couple years, and uh, they said when she ages out, she either she doesn't have an education other than high school. She has no family to go to. And when she ages out, she's going to sell drugs or sell her body. And I just, my heart broke for her. So we're praying for what can we, what can we do? I don't know. Just pray for us as a, as a family. We're thinking about making some moves to help her if we can. But just when you hear the stories, it, it challenges you to do something. While we're at the orphanage one day, a kid comes in. It's his first day there. He's 16. He has nothing. He has no family. He has no clothes on him. He has shoes and his feet are coming out of the shoes. And they say, Is there any, does anybody here have an extra pair of shoes? He, and we're like, well, what size does he wear? So we asked the team, anybody wear a 10 and a half? And Daniel, Daniel's right there. Daniel's wearing a size 10 and a half. He's like, I got a pair. And he's like, I got another pair at the hotel. I'm like, well, take your shoes off and give him your shoes. So he left the orphanage that way wearing these crazy pizza pattern socks. I don't know what he was wearing those for, but, <laughs> but we just gave him that. Because it was just like you see the need immediately. And you're like, we can do something. So pray about what you should give. And let's just bring shoes. Bring shoes and clothes. I'm not org I don't have any idea how to organize this. But over the next few weeks, let's just bring whatever we can close wise and let's give financially and I want to bless this church and this community because God is doing something there so anyway um, I wanted to I wanted to give you kind of a highlight video and show you guys a little bit about the trip of course it doesn't really cover everything that we experienced it was such a special trip but but here's a look back at, at what we experienced this week
very honored that you guys sent Pastor Josh with his team. And I just wanted to thank you because of that. And this has been a very awesome, very awesome mission trip. It's a way to connect with Anchor and to be able to go up across the country and going to other countries and seeing other cultures and being able to connect and doing uh, God's work. It challenges you spiritually. I've always told myself I wanted to do missions and I, I wanted to do this, but I never actually did it. It gives you a whole new perspective on life. It makes you not think selfishly anymore. You think more than yourself. Enrique and his team are doing a great work. They are really, I feel like, reaching the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah, there was those that worked in the, in the Bible school and they did a very good job. And then the team that worked on the building uh, did an excellent job working together. These people need help and we are more than equipped to be able to help people like this. We have resources that they would never have if it wasn't for us, you know, being able to come bring this to them. A lady in the community, she was out of work due to a surgery that she had. And God had put on my heart to give her the rest of the pesos that I had in my wallet. And that was able to pay her electric bill for about three months. When I gave a testimony, several guys came up to me and told me how much my word and how much it changed them. So to see something like that happen, just see God's love. It's beautiful, it's hard, amazing. The worst part about it is leaving, it really is. It's, it's hard to say goodbye to the people that we've met that um, we've you know, gotten to, to love and care for while we're here, but, um, but we know we'll be back. So it really was just such a special trip. So I, I know it's hard for like you to grab the emotion of it if you're not there, but I'm just telling, talk to somebody on the trip and just hear some of the stories and just pray about how would God challenge you to give towards uh, us meeting some of the immediate needs that they have. And then we're going to collect shoes and clothes and, and, uh, and hook them up, hook some of those kids up also. So um, you guys ready to get into the word? Okay, I'm ready to. We are continuing this series that, uh, that Andy and Michelle started last week. Man, they did a fantastic job on that. And we're starting this series called Summer Jams, where we've been looking at how music and the, the message of culture, really, if you look at songs, songs are often the sermons of culture. They're like, they're, this is what we believe as a culture. This is where we're headed as a culture. So I want to talk today about the, about the emotion that is king in our music, that, that we respond to every Everything with emotion. And I want to talk about how really when it comes to worship and our relationship with God, we get a different message in scripture than we do whenever it comes to, uh, to, to the songs and culture, that everything should be an emotional response. So I want to talk today, if you're taking notes today, the, today's message is called Good Vibrations. Okay? Maybe a couple of you might know a couple of these songs, but we're going to do, uh, we're going to play a real quick game with you guys and see if you guys can finish the lyrics on some of these songs. Okay, so uh, let's see the first Set a lyric and let's hear that first clip of music. Okay, anybody know the next lyrics? The next lyrics, what happens after this? Oh, Mary Beth knows it. Mary Beth is a Mariah Carey fan. She's like, I know it, but I ain't singing it. Do you know them? She's not singing them. Can you say them? You got me feeling emotions? What do we have? What's the next? There we go. You got me feeling emotions. All right. You, you won. You get a, uh, a recognition. Way to go. Um, okay. Let's look, let's look at the next clip here. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. What's the next after this? That sweet Dixie charm? Is that what it is? Refer the chorus. It's such a sweet sensation. Close, close. And it might be a different part in the song, but this is, this is the song. This is the lyrics I was looking for. Sorry, Christine, you did not win the new car. Okay, um, so let's look at the next one. Let's hear the next clip. She's giving up ex She's giving out excitations? There you go. Nice. Here you go. You got some free recognition. Here we go. Good job. Okay, we got one more. Let's look at another one, a little more current. Hey. 
We, we out here vibing? We vibing? We vibing. There we go. <laughs> you know what I appreciate about Ariana? It's, her words are so deep. You know, just a lot of, a lot of really thought-provoking. <laughs> but I was, I was thinking about like some of the messages that you hear in culture and some of the, the themes that you hear in some of these songs. And I want to pick out, there's two, two of the songs that we played are actually called Good Vibrations. And I want to look at some of the lyrics again, which are really wild. So the first one, the Funky Bunch one, Good Vibrations, is it's such a good vibration. And this is the idea that we would get like a good vibe from. You know, it's like there's this feeling, there's a strong feeling. And then he says, such a sweet sensation. So again, he's talking about feelings and even says later, feel it, feel it. So the idea is, can you feel the emotion? Can you, can you feel the connection there? The next song, the Beach Boys, one of the good vibrations, he says, I, I, I love the colorful clothes she wears and the way the sunlight plays upon her hair. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me the excitations. Oom, um, bop, bop. Ah, ah, my, my, what elation. Oh my, what a sensation. But you can hear in the song, the draw to emotion. Now, I don't know about you, but I have learned in my life that I cannot trust my emotion, okay? I mentioned just a second ago that we went to the orphanage while we were in Mexico, and I, I was like looking for ways to sneak some of those kids in my suitcase and take them home because I was so drawn emotionally hearing their stories and hearing what had happened. I was like, there are multiple kids in here that I will take home if I can right now. And, and even as I recall their stories, I'm emotionally drawn to it, but but some of those things are, some of the things that our emotions draw us to, they're not practical. Like you can't actually follow it. Emotions are not bad, but they can't be the bedrock of our life. And when it comes to worship, I want to talk really about the spirit of what worship is today. And it's kind of a, a dicey thing because there is emotion involved and there is this passion involved. But I, but I want to talk about the truth behind worship and, and the reason that we worship today. So it's, it's very easy. And it's, it's funny, like even in Christian songs, there's a lot of songs that are very shallow, like some of the ones that we look, some of the lyrics that we looked at. I was thinking about like, and I don't want to knock like worship songs, I'm not, a, I'm not like an enemy of the church at all. I think if you're singing to God, like that's great. Like you need, let's, let's, let's praise God as much as we can. And even the songs that we sing that might not have as much substance, I'd rather that than nothing at all. And some people don't like, like for instance, we sang uh, the song that we just sang a second ago. Some people don't like the idea that God would be reckless in his love, you know? And some people complain about that. I'm like, man, if it helps people to understand God's gracious love and pursuit of us, like whatever, like let's, let's sing it. But there are some songs that are just like crazy. I'm just picking on one song for a second. But, the, but Sloppy Wet Kiss. I mean, come on, y'all. Like, that's not great theology. <laughs> like it's, but like people have replaced it, you know, with like an unforeseen kiss, which I'm like, that's way creepier. Like, I want somebody sneaking up behind me and giving me this kiss I didn't see coming, you know. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I prefer the line, Sloppy Wet Kiss. And it's an amazing song. And I've, I have, that, that song has given me such a picture of God's grace. And, but it's like, man, like, that's not in the Bible, sloppy wet kiss, right? But we've got all these, like whenever it comes to the, the songs that we write or songs that we worship to, often it's like us trying to interpret what scripture is saying about God. And there's a lot of songs that are just like word for word from scripture, right? But there's, but whenever we get our emotion in it, sometimes we can, if we're not careful, the emotion of the song that we really like can become our theology. And there's a lot of people that I see like they hear a song and they're like, man, this is a revelation about God that I never understood, but maybe it's not actually accurate. And maybe it's a feeling that we're holding to more than just a truth. So I think that when we ask, because we're worshipers, every person is a worshiper. We worship something. And as Christians, we worship God. And whenever we think about our worship, I think we should be intentional about our worship. Now, I, if I'm in a room and a band is playing and there's worship music playing, I mean, if it's remotely theologically accurate, I can worship. Like, I, I, I love worship. I love being in worship. I love singing and, and lifting my hands and, and all the things we'll talk about in a second in this message. But it's like, but, but some of these songs, they don't actually help us to see God. 
They help us to feel a certain way. And sometimes we think that worship is the feeling. And we, and we say things like, that was good worship because I felt a certain way. Because I got tingly, because, you know, I, because the, the, the harmonies were just right or whatever it is that makes you experience or have a good worship experience. Sometimes we take the emotional things and some of the shallow things about worship and we, and we judge a moment of worship by those things instead of like what it's saying about God. And what I'm saying about God. Now, what I love about like like Sam brought up Hillsong today, and Hillsong, you know, Hillsong's team, every song that they write has to go through a team of pastors that judge the songs for their theological accuracy, which I think is good. There needs to be some accountability there, but we all know there's some songs out there that have not gone through a team. <laughs> they're just like, they're just some out there songs, and it's like, okay, man, you know, we sing it, that's your thing. But I want to talk about what makes good worship. What makes good worship? Because we say things like that. We say that worship is good as if it's actually for us or about us, but it's all for God, right? So if it's for him, he's really the judge of whether or not the worship experience was good. But, but, we, but we make these decisions and we say that worship was good based on a lot of shallower things. So I want to talk about what good worship is. So if you're taking notes, the first thing, and we're going to look through a lot of different scriptures for this. First thing that good worship is, good worship requires engagement. Good worship requires engagement because it's not a performance. And I hear stories like people say like, oh man, I love that church. Why do you love it? Because it's just got, it's got good worship. The band's good and the, the music's good. And, and all of those things can be a part of good worship, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, that Jesus was praised in the hearts of the people, you know? Like sometimes it can be just a, it can be a show. It can be this thing where we watch it and we experience it and it is emotionally, um, it, it pulls emotion out of us and it helps us to, to, you know, to, to cry and whatever we need in that moment, but worship's not self-help. Like it's, it's, the, it's glorifying the God of the universe. It's putting him in his rightful place. It's taking our crown and our pride and putting it at his feet and saying, and saying things about God that are true. So, so you know, I think we have to be cautious about like what things we use to judge worship. So I want to talk about just some of the, the things that we see in worship. So singing, clapping, raising your hands, all of these things are biblical, okay? And it's not like, and I never want to be the kind of church that's like, you have to do this or you aren't worshiping well. I don't think that's the case at all. But I want to also talk about like, why, why, is it, why do we do that in church? Like, why, why are some of the things that we, why do we clap our hands? We don't clap our hands for anything else unless, you know, like it's kind of an odd thing to do to clap to music. We don't lift our hands for a whole lot of things in life. So what is that? We, we sing, but, but like some of us aren't very good at it. So why should we all be doing it? You know, like, so we, there's these things that are in scripture though, that I want to look at why it matters. So the first thing is Psalm 40, 47, verse one through two. It says this in verse one. And actually, these are just a few verses. This is, scripture is full of references to all of these. So it says, first one, come, everyone, clap your hands. Shout to God with joyful praise. Why? And then it says in verse two, for the Lord most high is awesome. He is great. He is the great king of all the earth. So because of who he is, because of his greatness, his majesty, I'm going to clap my hands and I'm going to shout to him and I'm going to praise him because he's worthy of it. So, so you see this response to who God is. I remember when I was a kid, I used to do this a lot. I used to have my hands in my pocket a lot, just standing around. I don't really know what to do with them. I remember my grandpa telling me, don't put your hands in your pocket, boy. He said, you look lazy when you put your hands in your pocket. Always be ready to work. And I was like, oh, okay. So now I'm just like, you know, I don't know what to do with my hands. And then I remember like, I'm playing baseball and I'm in the outfield, you know, and I'm just like out here like that. And my dad's like, don't put your hands on your knees. You're not gonna be ready. You can't respond to the ball fast enough. So then I'm just like, you know, I don't know. I'm like, okay, no hands on my knees, no hands in my pocket. But I like learn these rules. And what I understood later is that our hands are meant for use. And what I believe that worship is, when we clap our hands or raise our hands, it's returning their use and what we do with our life. It's returning it to God. I'm going to make a sound with these instruments to you. I can't play an instrument, but I can clap my hands. I, I might not be able to sing very well, but I know it's a joyful noise to you anyway. So I'm going to use what I have to make noise for my king. And I think that's one of the reasons why we see hand clapping in scripture. Look at this one, Psalm 63, verse 3. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. I will, how I will praise you. And then here's the response. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting my hands to you in prayer. 
Again, you see the hands being used for the glory of God. I'm going to return this to you. What I do with my life, everything that I touch in life and everything that I am, it, it happens a lot with these hands. So I'm returning them to you. And then in, in 1 Timothy 2, it says this. This is a New Testament one. Paul is challenging Timothy. I want, in every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands, lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. So you see this returning of our hands to God. A couple of, uh, well, this is right, right before we went to Mexico. We're fishing in the pond in our backyard, and I see a snake, and he's kind of hanging out like all day. Mason had seen him. He was over one day, and he saw them. He saw him swimming around. Later that afternoon, snake's still hanging out. So, like, I, I see him, and my son's always fishing right there. I didn't know what kind of snake it was, so I always want to be cautious. So I, I tell Judah, go get, go get the shovel. So he goes, and he grabs the shovel, and, and I'm, I'm about to strike this snake, but every time I take a step, he takes off into the water. So I'm like, man, I got to, like, set this thing up. So I, I inch in real close to the edge of the pond, you know, and then I'm like, and then I'm there, and he's, so I start to lift the shovel, and he takes off again, and I'm like, man, I got to be, like, ready when, whenever he comes to the shore because he can't breathe forever underwater so he's coming back up at some point so I lift my hands with the shovel and my shovel is just above my head and like the first minute goes by and then the next minute goes by and the next minute and I'm starting to feel like Moses we're needing Aaron and her to hold my hands up while I'm waiting for this, this snake to come and finally the snake comes back and I'm in position and the snake picks his head up and it comes right up to the shore and I strike I had no idea if I got him because he was still in the water. So there's just smoke in the water, you know, not smoke, mud, it's no smoke underwater. But, you know, but like there's just the, the mud's in the water. I can't tell if I got him. It starts to clear out. And all of a sudden, I see the body of the snake right there in the water. And I got him. And I was just thinking while I was, I had a lot of time to think while I had my hands up because it was so long. But I thought this is what worship is. That while my hands are pray are lifted up, I'm in position to strike the enemy. Because the, the Bible describes the enemy, Satan, the first time he shows up, he's a serpent. That he is trying to deceive. And the whole time, I just thought, man, the position of worship is the best way to strike the enemy. Is the best way to be in position to strike the enemy. And, and I was able to bring down a shovel and end up killing the snake because I was in position. And yeah, Judah was excited about the snake afterwards. But I thought about it, and I was like, man, I was like, what, what? And the reason I'm talking to you about clapping or raising your hands or singing is I don't want you to miss the power of engagement in worship. I don't want you to just, like, for you, for your health and for your strength and for your ability to fight the enemy, I don't want you to miss the power in a worship moment, in a worship experience. So I think that the more that we trust God and we clap and we sing and we lift our hands, whatever way that looks like, don't, don't try to look like anybody else or whatever, but challenge yourself to do something that you might not be comfortable with. You know, I think about it, it's like we go, we go crazy for our passions, right? We do crazy things for our passions, but here, I don't, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings here. But the tigers didn't die for any of us. But we go real passionate for them, right? Look at this. They all worshiping. And you know what's funny? Actually, if you, go, if you go to a Saturday night game, you've seen the video that opens up. What does it say? This is our, in the video, in the voiceover, it says, this is our cathedral and worship happens here. It says it in the video. Next time you go to a game, that's what it says. And I've always heard, I'm be like, man, that is, ew, that's messed up. But, it, but we do worship things. We're very passionate and we act a fool about things that we're passionate about. So why not let God, why not let God see our passion? Why don't we return our passion to God? It's funny that even the LSU, the Tiger Stadium understands that we are created for worship. So I'm not saying don't, I'm, go, I'm going crazy for the Tigers this year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that, but I'm also going to praise my God. I'm also going to look crazy for him. So, and then here's the last verse I want to talk about, just kind of a singing highlight in, in, in Colossians 3, verse 16. Sing hymns and sing songs, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. So I, I just think you see this all through scripture that there is something that should happen in worship. And, and I just want to, hopefully you don't really think this way, but worship is not a spiritual gift gift for those with the spiritual gift of worship it's for all of us so like on some level we're all called to worship God and it's going to look different and some of you going to sound way better than others but we're all called to return our worship to God so good worship requires engagement the second thing is that good worship stirs your spirit 
Good worship does something in, in a part of you that is unexplainable. While we were in Mexico, man, we had this moment of worship. And I want to play just a really quick clip of what it looked like to worship in Oasis of Blessing. Check this out. Okay, anybody recognize that song? What's the, what's the name of the song? Do you know it? I can't remember. I can't like think of the name of the song. But what they did, this is Amazing Grace, yes. So what they did is they would do the, the, most of the verses and chorus in Spanish, and then they did a couple in English for us. And it would, but was amazing is that even though I faintly under, I recognized most of the songs that we did, I did not know the lyrics, but I recognized the spirit of worship. And, it's, and there's something intangible that happens in worship, that God speaks to our spirit, that there is a spiritual response, that there's something going on in us that we can't explain. And it's not just feelings. There are feelings attached to it, and there is something really special that happens, but there's something supernatural today. While we were worshiping, and I'm up here just waiting for somebody to be prayed on, nobody came up, I guess y'all all good, you know, whatever. But I'm, I'm praying. And I just began to pray and sing in the spirit. That there was something that just, there was just a, I've just felt a response in the spirit that needed to happen. So there's, there's got to be something in us that happens that is very spiritual during worship. We've got to let the spirit of God have access in those moments. In John 4, Jesus runs across this woman who is at a well. She is uh, with the fifth, the fifth person she's in is not her husband. She has, no, she's been married five, is it four or five times? I don't remember. But anyway, the woman is at the well. Jesus talks to her and reveals her sin and her need for him. Then she asks him a worship question. So Jesus starts asking, starts talking to her about worship and he says something something that you've probably all heard, but this is really cool. He says in verse 23, but the time's coming, indeed it's here now, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is looking for those who will worship him in that way, for God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So there is a spiritual and an intangible response to worship. And we love that part. That part is a part that we feel good about whenever you have a moment of spiritual worship. We love that part. Here's what the word spirit means in the Greek. It means, the word is pineo, which means to blow or to breathe as the wind. So this is a word that means that with, with the, I love, that's why I love that all sons and daughters, that the, the, the breath in my lungs, it's your breath in my lungs, that, that I'm going to return it to you. So like you understand that like, God, you give me everything and this moment is yours. The reason I'm singing it's yours and there's a very spiritual and supernatural response. But the thing about breath is that it's fleeting, Right? The thing about wind is that it's fleeting. So even the spiritual response in worship is not all there is to worship. There's a spiritual side and a truth side to worship. And what I think is interesting, we talked about that word, um, that, that song, Good Vibrations, a second ago. And in the song, Good Vibrations, the guy who wrote it was, his name is Brian Wilson. And it's the, that song, Good Vibrations, when he was a part of Beach Boys, was the last number one song that he wrote. The last one. They made a movie about his life called Love and Mercy, where he turns to drugs and he's depressed. And for the rest of his life, he never wrote a song again like that. And he just went on a downward spiral that's pretty sad to see. But in that song, you see that he was all, it was all about everything in his life and what he was pursuing was feelings. He even is quoted as saying this, I still believe that something is right only when it feels right. And I was thinking that is what many of us treat worship like. That when it feels right, I'll do it. When I'm in the mood for worship, I'll even show up at church, much, much less worship. That when I feel a part of this, then it's going to be a good, it's going to be good. I, I like the songs. The guys sang it, and it really was, man, they did a great job. That high note really gave me the chills. Well, high notes don't necessarily have more Holy Spirit in them than low notes do. <laughs> so, like, what is, it's a response to emotion that many of us feel during worship. But how something feels does not determine its level of truthfulness. And here's what I want us to understand. One of the big things today is authentic worship is saying true things about God, whether you feel them or not in that moment. And that's what we're called to, to authentic worship, to saying true things about God. I know for me personally, that when I feel worship the most, it's when I feel like giving God praise the most, it's when he just did something I needed him to do. And that's a problem in us is that we, we think that God deserves praise when he just did something. Man, he's so good. He's so faithful. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give him my praise because he just answered this prayer. 
But here's the last thing that I want us to, to see today. The rest, one of the main points that I want us to understand about worship and what makes worship good is that good worship reveals Jesus. And here's why I say that. Jesus is known as the truth. In John 14, he calls himself the way and the truth and the life. And there are a lot of things in our life that happen to us that cause us to question whether or not Jesus is who he says that he is. He says something in scripture, but we don't see it right now. So it's hard for us to worship in the moments when I don't recognize this Jesus. We're singing about this Jesus, but I don't see him being faithful. I don't see him doing the things that he's promised that he's going to do. And sometimes in those moments, it is the hardest for us to worship. But worship in truth, that, that phrase that Jesus tells this woman, when we worship in truth, it's a challenge to say what's true, whether we feel it or not. Say what's true about God, whether or not you are feeling it in that moment. And worshiping in truth is a statement about who God is, not about what's surrounding you. It's just saying what's true about God. So like in 2 Samuel 24, I love this verse. And if you know this story, you know that there's a plague that God stopped whenever, Dan whenever David cries out to God. The, the, the angel of death stops at a man named Aruna's front door at his threshing floor. So a sacrifice is going to be made to God to stop this, this plague. And David is coming and Aruna says, take my threshing floor, floor, use it as a place to sacrifice to God. I'll give you the oxen. I'll give you everything that you need. And David says, no, I'm not going to just take it from you. Let me buy it. And this is how he says it. The king replied to Aruna, no, I insist on buying it for I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that have cost me nothing. So David paid him 50 pieces of silver for the threshing floor and the oxen. Authentic worship is costly. There's going to be times when you don't feel like singing those words. There's a lot of times that have happened, that's happened to me. I think if it's not hard to say those words sometimes, then you ain't singing the right songs. Because there's going to be a lot of times in our life when I don't feel the thing that's on the screen. I don't see those words in my life. But I'm going to say it anyway because he is who he says that he is. Yeah. So I'm going to ask the band to come up. We're going to get ready to wrap up in a second. One of the songs that I absolutely love, one of my favorite songs right now, is Hillsong United's even when it hurts. And listen to some of the lyrics in this song. I love this theme. Even when the fight seems lost, I will praise you. Even when it hurts like hell, I'll praise you. Even when it makes no sense to sing, louder than I'll sing your praise. I've noticed in my life the best moments of worship have been the most difficult for me. Some of you were with us at, as a church whenever we, February 19th, of 2017 we woke up that morning to set up church at the varsity theater like theater like normal and we realized our trailer was stolen so it's like oh my gosh we're just not going to do church anymore you know what we're just not going to ch do church at all not just today was the immediate temptation but we felt like we should keep going so people just started calling people hey you got mics you got drums you got anything we can borrow so we had church that morning so we decided just to have church. I got a, a retro picture from our days at the varsity where we just decided to have church anyway. And we were stripped down. We didn't have all the same stuff that we had. But that morning is one of the mornings that marked our resilience as a church. I want to show you our planning center layout of what our song list was that day. That day, we were singing Love So Great, King of My Heart, Good, Good Father. Beautiful songs. I love all these songs. The problem was that morning, they were singing way too much about God's goodness. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to sing those songs. I didn't even know if I believed them. So we start singing these songs, and I'm a mess. I'm crying my eyes out. I'm like, we have church in a bar. I'm supposed to be a tough guy, you know? But I'm crying my eyes out singing these songs. I'm singing about God's goodness and king of my heart. You are good. You are good. Oh. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know why. But I felt like if I sang the words, I'd believe it later. If I said the truth about God, then it would force my emotions and my spirit to line up with it. And that's exactly what happened. So I continued to sing about the goodness of God. And then we sang about the good father. And I'm like, okay we're gonna try this again I'm gonna sing this song even though I don't see it right now 
And we began to sing as a church. And I think really, if you were there that day, you know it was a special day. But I remember the moment. I remember feeling. It was like, a, it's like you know how when you sing, but like you can't sing? You're like, you are good, good. You're like, you can't even like catch your breath. You know, you're crying so hard. And that's what it was like. Because I was forcing my emotions to line up with the truth of who God was. Not in what I felt like. So there is a spirit side of worship that God activates and challenges our spirit and there's something that happens in us that's spiritual and it is powerful and we can't even label it, but that's not all there is. There has to be also moments in worship where we just say what we don't even know what we believe, where we just say the truth about God. Here's the last thing if you're taking notes. Worship is sometimes a reaction, but always a decision. Sometimes we're blessed with moments where, God, you've been so good. I'm going to dance today. I'm going to say, this is going to be awesome. But other days, you're crying on your knees at the altar, and you're hoping, you're hoping that it's true. I'm hoping so bad that what I'm saying is true. I need it to be true. And in those moments, there's such a purity in worship. Because it's not about what you like anymore. It's not about you. It's not about that moment, about how something feels. But instead, it's about, I am going to say things in faith that I don't necessarily see. We're going to sing another song right now. Praise before my breakthrough, which is probably my number one song right now. And funny thing is, I prepared this message and I did not know whoever picked the songs, who picked them. I didn't know that we were doing this song. So I put the lyrics in here and I was like, I want to remind this in church about this song. And she had just picked this song. So this next moment is a Holy Spirit moment when something like that happens. It's a God moment. It says in the song, he who came in power, he will come again. He who heals the sick, won't he move again? He who raised the dead, won't he raise again? I'll praise before my breakthrough till my song becomes my triumph. I will sing because I trust you. And I love that this song both recalls who God has been and has faith in who God needs to be for me. (laughs) And I think that this is a beautiful picture of what we're called to in worship. So I'm going to ask you to stand up. And I want to challenge you to say some true things this morning. I want to challenge you to say true things about God whether or not you feel them this morning so we're going to sing we're going to do this whole song together and I want you to respond however you need to don't hold anything back from God sing lift your hands if you want do whatever I'm not putting a standard of what worship should look like but I want you to sing with authenticity today say some true things about God and let a spiritual moment happen we stop those spiritual moments from happening don't stop it Let the Spirit of God speak to you and promise you things that you don't want to hear. Let's just return this moment to the Lord. This is what we're called to be a worshiping church. So let's return this moment and let's sing about what He is. Let's sing about who He is today. the tension of the now I don't always understand I don't always get to see everything when I'm holding up my hands and I'm counting every breath Lord all I need to know is you choose me you choose me and I'll praise before my breakthrough till my song becomes my triumph I will sing because I trust you I will bring my heart I will lift my soul When I'm listening for your voice And I'm shutting out the noise I know that you will speak clearly 
When I'm living out my faith, when I'm stepping on the sea, I know you take my hands and walk with me, walk with me. And I'll praise before my breakthrough. My song becomes my triumph I will sing because I trust you I will bring my heart I will lift my soul If you need to say something true about God right now that you don't know if you believe, I want to challenge you to do it. So let's just take a moment. If you want to lift your hands, if you want to just stand where you are, but voice it to God. Just begin to say, God, I trust you. I trust you. Lord, you see where we are as a church. And your word says, it gives a great picture that when you were looking out of the crowds, you saw the needs of the people so you don't just see a crowd today but you see every single story you know exactly what we need you know our fears you know our doubts you know what keeps us from saying that we trust you but Lord I pray that today as we say what's true that you would respond with a spiritual response give us faith give us trust Give us endurance. Help us to continue. Help us to go another day, another week, another month. Help us to trust you instead of giving up, instead of stopping, instead of wondering if it's possible. Help us to trust you today. Lord, we put our faith and our trust 
in you, the one who has done it and the one who can do it again. Today, we make a decision to believe and to say true things about you, that you are faithful. You are the same God who parted the sea from Moses and you'll do it for us. Lord, I thank you that right now you're breaking apart barriers. You are opening up the lanes of congestion. You're opening up lanes. You are providing where there seems to be no way for your body. So, Lord, we ask that you would do miracles in this room. Lord, you see everything that is necessary for us right now. And I pray that by your spirit, you would touch the heart of every person here. Give us trust and then do that miracle. Lord, we ask that you would do what only you can do. Reach in. Touch, touch that part of our life that we see only in possibility. We can't see it happening. But Lord, we thank you that you are able, and we say you are able. We make a commitment to say that right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hey, before I let you go, I also want to challenge you. If you're here today, and maybe you've never put your trust in Jesus, and you say, man, a lot of stuff you're talking about today is kind of foreign. I'm talking about raising your hands and singing, clapping trusting God for like I don't even know what to trust him for I'm just here today somebody invited me or I'm watching online I'm just checking this thing out and I don't really even know why we would do this the Bible gives this beautiful picture what the Bible is is it's a book that tells a story of God's love for humanity our desperate need for him then Jesus comes and Jesus makes a way where we couldn't make that way on our own and the reason that we respond in worship, and you, to some of you, you might be weird that we lift our hands or sing or clap, is because those of us who do that, like we understand that we are helpless on our own to save ourselves. And God, through Jesus, did this incredibly selfless thing where he rescued us out of the dark. And my response has to be foolish. It has to look great. It has to be outside of normality because of what he did for me was not normal. What he did for me, like Gayla said, was perfect love. And maybe, so if you're here today and you say, man, I don't really know God like that. I don't really know Jesus like that, but I wanna make a decision today. I feel something drawing me into this relationship with God. If you're here today and you would say, I've never really surrendered, trusted Jesus with my life, or maybe I've done that a long time ago, but I'm not doing that right now. And you would say, I want to make a decision today to, to faithfully follow Jesus, to trust him with my life. If that's you, could you just lift up your hand right now and say, I need Jesus today. I need Jesus to touch my life. I need him to give me a brand new life. Thank you, Jesus. I can't really see past this. So if there's anybody raising your hand, we're going to pray with you. Anybody online, join us, pray with us. We're going to pray a prayer of just saying yes to Jesus. So let's say this together, church. Let's say, Lord Jesus, I trust you with my life. I know I can't save myself. I'm a sinner, and I need you to be my Savior. I know you're the perfect Son of God. You gave your life for me on the cross, and then you were risen again, and you offer me a new life now. So I lay down who I used to be. And now I follow you with all my heart. My life is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, man. Let's praise Jesus for that. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today or any time in the last couple of months since we've had our last baptism, I want to challenge you. Sign up to be baptized. You can do that at anchorchapel.com slash baptism, I believe. And we want you to... This is following Jesus' instructions. He said, be baptized. He told us as followers to go and baptize people. What baptism is, is it is a picture of what Jesus does in our spirit. That, that the old person, the old sinful version of us, it dies before we meet Jesus. Or as we meet, when, and we give up our life. And we say, now my new life is found in Jesus and Jesus alone. So baptism is a beautiful picture of salvation, of what it is to follow Jesus. So if you haven't been baptized, sign up for it. We're going to baptize people as soon as we have enough people for that. Um, I also want to challenge you, next Sunday is Father's Day. So all the dads in the house here, 
make sure that you tell tell your kids, and most of you are younger fathers, but tell your kids, hey, we're going to church Sunday. We're going to make it a priority. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have jerky, special donuts, and some potent coffee. It's going to be a lot of fun, but we're also going to have a lot of fun as dads. Man, it's going to be a powerful weekend. If, you, if you're here and you say, man, I want my dad to be here, I promise you he's going to leave encouraged. He's going to leave strengthened. We're going to build up dads next weekend. So next weekend's Father's Day. It's going to be an awesome Sunday. Make sure you join us for that. Last thing, just pray about how God would have you give. If you're a part of this house and you want to give of tithes or offerings, you know, just to this house, make it really easy. You can give online or in the give box in the back or you can text to give. But I also want you to pray about how we can be a blessing to Oasis the Church in Mexico that's out, that's out of our normal giving. Just pray about how, how, how God would have you be a part of that. And then bring shoes and clothes over the next few weeks. We're going to do that. And when we collect enough, we're going to bring it out there to them. So, hey, I think that's it. Um, but thank you guys for being here. We're going we're gonna to have an awesome weekend next weekend. But throughout this week, man, you guys are the light of the world. So light it up in your workplace and in your neighborhoods. We love you all. You See you next week.